Okay, this is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about solids, CE3303. We're going to look at a simple beam design example from the book. This is example 11.1. Just go through it step by step. The beam setup is like this. It's 18 foot long total pin at this end A, and a support B, a roller support, 12 feet away from that. The loads are 40 kips and 20 kips. And first thing to do is solve for the reactions. Always when we want to solve for reactions, we want to sum moments. And so I've summed moments about point B, which eliminates the reaction at B. Counterclockwise is positive. I have negative, because it's clockwise moment around B, negative AY times 12 feet plus, because it's counterclockwise, 40 kips times 6 feet minus, because it's clockwise, 20 kips times 6 feet. That's all I have going on around B. So AY is equal to, do all the math, 240 minus 120 divided by 12 is 10 kips up. BY is simple sum of forces in the Y direction. Downward I have 40 and 20 minus AY is 10. So that gives me 50 kips up at B. <clears throat> I draw those on there. Then I do the best way to find the maximum shear and moment, which is what I need, is to do a shear and moment diagram. So I do a shear diagram, and I can just, using the graphical method, just draw these numbers out there. Shear diagram jumps up at a concentrated load of 10. Nothing happened in between there and the 40 kip load, so it stays at 10 constant. At the 40 kip load, it jumps down 40, so 10 minus 40 is negative 30. Still stays constant over to the reaction at B. Support which is 50, so it jumps up from negative 30 plus 50, puts me at 20, and I stay there till I get to the end of the beam, that overhang, the 20 kip reaction takes me that back down to zero. Now remembering that the moment is just the uh, area under the shear diagram, what I have here is positive 10 for my shear, so my slope is going to be positive, so it's going to go up, and the change from the zero point at the start to this uh, point where there's a concentrated load of 40 is going to be the area under the shear diagram, 10 times 6, so 60, it's going to go from zero with a positive sloping line up to 60. Then my slope is going to turn negative because my shear is negative, negative 30, and it's going to slope down a lot more than it was sloping up. The change in the shear is going to be, the change in the moment, excuse me, is going to be negative 30 times 6 feet, or 180, so it's negative 180 from 60, takes me down to one, negative 120. Slope of this line should be three times what the slope of this line over here is because it's three times as big and it's negative. Finally, at this support at B, my shear reverses to positive 20, so I'm going to have a positive slope. I know I'm going to be going to zero. I check that number with the area under the shear diagram 20 times 6 or positive 120. I need to label this as negative 120. So 6 times 20 is 120, so that takes me back. Adding that to negative 120 takes me to 0. So there's my moment diagram. Nice and easy. You can do those, no doubt. Okay, that is because the whole problem here is to find the lightest W-shaped steel beam for the loading given 
and an allowable bending stress of 24 KSI and allowable shear stress of 14.5 KSI. So, in chapter 11, 1 and 2, we talk about this for bending the required section modulus, which is, remember that's just I over C, moment of inertia divided by the distance to the extreme fiber. That's a tabulated value for W shapes, but you could figure it on your own if you had to. Just moment of inertia divided by half the height, usually for a rectangular section. That's C distance in MC over I. So, this is really just a rewriting of this formula right here, MC over I, and a rearrangement. So my section modulus required is my maximum moment divided my by my allowable stress. So my maximum moment is this negative 120. So I've got negative 120 divided by my allowable shear stress, my allowable bending stress, which is 24. Note that this is in KSI, kips per square inch. This is in foot-pounds. Should have written that over here. Foot-pounds, KSI, I need a conversion factor of, I need to convert this into uh, pound inches of moment. So I'm going to multiply by 12. And so I do all that math and I get that I need 60 inches cubed, which is the units of section modulus. I want to check my dimensions. I have kips per square inch. I have I have kips foot pounds. Kip kip feet is my units. That's not foot pounds. That's foot kips times 12 inches per foot for that conversion factor. This is kips per inch squared. So what I have is kip inches divided by kip inches squared. Sure enough that works out to be in the kips cancel and I get inches cubed. So I go into a table in the book. It has from t Appendix B several suggested beams. And generally, you know, you're going to want to go for the, the lightest beam. And so that is a W18, I mean, it's 18 inches approximately tall or deep by 40, meaning it weighs 40 pounds per foot, linear foot. Its section modulus is 68.4 inches to the fourth. So it's more than adequate to meet this requirement. They give you a bunch more, a 1645. Um, all those other ones that they give in the book weigh more. So this is a good, good uh, member for that. If I was nervous, I could divide my moment by my uh, section modulus and check my allowable shear stress. Um, they don't do that, but uh, my number is going to be somewhere 22 or something like that KSI. So this is a good, that's the answer I was looking for. But I've still got to check my shear and Shear is usually on most beams unless they're really short or really have a lot of concentrated load, um, a lot of shear force on them are going to be all right. But I go back in the in the back of Appendix B, and I get these two properties because it's a W shape. All I need to worry about is average shear stress. I don't need to worry about VQ over IT, which is the A the actual shear stress, I kind of use an approximation. I ignore the contributions of the flanges because they they don't carry much of the shear anyway. So I look in the thickness of the web for a W18 by 40 from the back 
is 0.315 inches. Its actual depth, its nominal depth is 18, but its real depth is 17.9. Of course, I need to use the real value. And my maximum shear is this negative 30 here. So my shear stress calculation just looks like, because it's a W shape, I can just do the simplified method. Use the average shear stress, and that's V max over the area of the web. So that is equal to 30 kips divided by the depth and the height, the depth and the thickness of the web. 17.9, 0.315. That equals to 5.32. KSI. Real quick check, I've got kips on the top and I've got inches times inches or inches squared on the bottom. So I do have KSI. I compare that to my allowable which is 14.5 and as it usually is um, for steel beam design it's well within that limit so it's okay.